What's up, you guys? What's up, you guys? Here are 10 things you need to know if you're starting out as a freelance photographer. Let's get right into it. If you're not familiar with the channel, my name is Gabriel Presova, and I'm a fashion and celebrity photographer based out of New York City. Um, and today I'll be showing you something that I think would have been a very helpful video uh, back in my day if I would have seen it. Because sometimes you don't expect some of the things that come when stepping into the freelance world. And I know it seems scary and foreign and exciting, but you know, but uncertain. Let me help you navigate that today with this video. And if you enjoy, leave a subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and check out your boys work on Instagram, at underscore youngshot. Appreciate you guys for the channel growing so much lately. Let's get into it. So the first thing we need to know, right, is it's okay to work for free sometimes. Now, this goes from beginner level, even up to the professional level. The key thing in this is knowing what opportunity it would make sense to give your time and effort to. And even when you're a professional, um, there might be projects that come across, editorials, et cetera, et cetera, that you may feel are a good opportunity to add to your book um, or to just do with a team that you wanna work with. The first step I took to go into the industry was um, working at a modeling agency for free, pretty much. I mean, they were paying a stipend $20 a day um, for food, but that's pretty much <laughs> for free. And while I was working at this modeling agency, one thing I always had in mind was, you know, if I'm giving my time for free, I wanna make sure that I'm taking what I need and it's an equal compensation, you know? And at the moment where I felt like the cap off for that growth was reached, then at that moment, it was time for me to go. That being said, moving on to the next point, the same way you gotta learn to say yes and say yes to different opportunities, you know, different styles of photography you might you might do. You know, for example, you shoot fashion, but you're starting out and you're getting, you're able to shoot a job where it's like shooting, um, you know, shooting products or shooting food or shooting sports. I mean, that's a great way to make some extra money and diversify your portfolio. You gotta also learn how to say no because there's gonna be a lot of opportunities and a lot of situations where, where an opportunity might come up, right? An opportunity. But you gotta be able to decipher and sift through what is a real opportunity and what is just a bunch of, of talk and false promises, you know? You know, editing, doing the job, photographing it, bringing equipment, all this, you know, takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of costs, it takes a lot of like effort and time on your own part. So you wanna make sure you're investing that into something that's investing it back into you. Next thing that's an important thing that I used to stress about and wasted time worrying about this versus making an, doing an action about it. And that is, don't worry so much about what lights to buy or what makes, what is the best light to buy when that doesn't matter at the beginning. What matters is buying any light. It could be the cheapest lights on Amazon, one of those kits, whatever. Any light is the best light when you're starting out because you're not really gonna notice a huge difference. A lot of the big differences in the price points and the professional lights and the cheap ones, it's a lot having to do with like recycling time. A lot, of, a lot of stuff that like, it won't really make a big difference to you and you won't really, like the most important part for you as a beginner with the light that you get is for you to understand light direction for you to understand the difference between modeling light, strobe light, for you to understand the difference between what modifier does what, how it lights the subject, how it, you know, all these things. And you don't need to have a pro photo, top of the line, uh, most expensive light to accomplish this. So for a lot of years, I mean, being from Florida originally, I would choose to shoot natural light. And even in New York, because I didn't have a studio and it's expensive to get a studio or you get your hands on it. Or even when I was assisting slash interning, you know, photographer, it would only be when we were on set that I would really have access to this stuff. So the time to learn how to use it and all that wasn't really there, except when we were like on a high paced, high intensity job. And obviously, you know, but I did learn a lot and pick up a lot, but it's very important to get your own hands on the equipment you know, test it out for yourself, move it around. Just one light moving around different ways can drastically affect an image and and just 
and in general the mood on the subject and everything. But yeah, like I said, so it took a while for me to actually start getting my hands on lights and, and make sure you have time to test it out where it's not just like you're shooting. Because a lot of times you're shooting, you won't have the time to really sit down and be like, damn, I wanna try this lighting setup. Oh, I saw this, I wanna try it. Let me figure out how to put what, where, this, that, what does this do, what does that do? Because you start getting stressed out. You're like, man, you know, the whole team is here, the model's here, the, you know, the makeup's here, whatever, whatever. Like, people gotta go, so you don't have all day to do that. So make sure you make time and space allotted for being able to test out light and play with the lighting when, when, when you're just at home, maybe with yourself, some self-portraits, whatever it is. Easy biscuits, right? Next tip, leading on from this, taking self-portraits. For a fashion photographer, freelancer, anybody working with other human subjects, I super, super recommend, and this was recommended to me by two photo oh, by one mainly photographer who I also was interning with when I was first starting in Miami, actually. And he said to me, um, you need to like one day just go in your bathroom mirror and put on some music on, on the phone, on the speaker, um, get in your groove and just kind of in front of the mirror and start posing and feeling it and like, you know, bringing down that wall of like, of embarrassment um, and not being comfortable in that and just start hitting some poses and getting comfortable with it because especially when you're starting out, you're not working with professional models. So the people you're gonna work with, a lot of times they're not gonna be comfortable posing or knowing what to do. So you're gonna have to coach them, guide them, position them. And that it comes a lot easier if you if if you start working on that with yourself and become more comfortable and confident and strong in this in this area of knowledge. Then that's something that I did. And it's it's helped tremendously. Like nowadays I'm I'm really good at that, but I remember how awkward it was starting out. Cause you're like, damn, 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 what do I do now for posing? You know, you're like, ooh, twiddling your fingers. You're like, both of you guys looking at each other like, gee whiz. But once you get good at that, once you get comfortable with it, you know, it'll start flying off the wall, you feel me? Flying off the wall. And it'll get easier because you start working with more, you know, with more professional models, people who know how to pose already. But especially the beginning, and even later on, it comes in handy, it really does. Because you'll also want to, the best way to show what you want um, what the poses you want and what you want them to, to give in front of the camera, a lot of times you have to model it first, you know, so they can replicate that or, or you know, bounce off of that. Another tip from another photographer who I was cool with when I first started out, that he gave me when I was first, you know, starting out was, if you really want to shoot fashion, you got to kind of like dismantle the gender roles you've been taught growing up because you can't really shoot fashion well if you see everything very like male or female, you, you get me? And, you know, I understood it when he said it, but as time has gone on, I've understood it even more and more. Next tip, <clears throat> next tip, right? So a lot of times we'll look on Instagram and we see, we'll see photos and we'll be like, damn, like, how'd he take that photo? And, you know, we'll set up this, set up that. Even when I was interning and assisting, like, I'd see them use the lights and I'd be like, let me try to replicate that. And the photo wouldn't look the same sometimes. I'm like, it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not good at math. Something isn't adding up. You know, what could it be? But it turns out that a lot of times the finished product, a lot of what goes into it, isn't just the lighting and everything. It's a lot of the editing. Um, a lot of times the lighting, you know, you could have it down and you may think you don't because it's not looking like that but a lot of what goes into images and their final product and the final image that you see at the end of the day on the magazine, on the billboard, whatever it is, really comes down to the editing. And what most photographers won't tell you is that most photographers don't edit their own photos and retouch them and all that. You know what I mean? So it's good to learn, but you don't need to spend the, the, the weeks on end of learning you know, frequency, you know, separating, retouching tool, whatever, whatever on YouTube. Not that you shouldn't know it's important. I know how to retouch. I spend the time to learn. I think it's important to learn all of these things. But the truth is most photographers have somebody who they pay for lighting to set the lights on jobs. They have somebody they outsource to for retouching, 
which I outsource for retouching sometimes if it's just tedious and I have a lot of work or whatever, but I can do it myself. Um, or even the editing. I mean, the editing, I am only me. I only do the editing because that's really like, well, that's my thing. Like, I don't trust other people to do it. But you'd be surprised. A lot of photographers, they just come in, you know, do the thing and everything else gets outsourced or, or handled by other people. Um, you know, which is important too, because if you're really working at that level, like, you know, you need your focus on what you're doing, your job and your main thing, and that's it. But the point of it is, learn what you need to learn, like learn what you need to know. But if you're not a master in one area of those, always remember you can outsource. And, and back on the whole post-production thing, dude, like what you learn on YouTube and all that is fantastic, but don't just replicate it and leave it at that. Like use that knowledge and those tips for Photoshop, Lightroom, etc., and take the next level, take it the next steps, you know, add your own twist to it, you know, start doing it, start adding something here and there, like turning down the level of it, you know, changing things up and that's where you'll really get outstanding and you know unique and creative results that people will really turn their heads to. An another tip that you really need to know if you're gonna start, if you know this is what you want to get into, then you gotta learn the history of it. Um, I highly suggest you know you educate yourself, you dive into research, you know you you learn about like the greats of photography, you know learn about Helmut Newton, Norman Parkinson, Vivian Mayer, learn about you know the history of you know, Christian Dior, you know, the fashion houses. Like, you gotta really study, take a deep dive. You understand film photography, you understand, you know, medium format, you understand where photography comes from, you know? Like, educate yourself in the area of what you wanna exceed in, you know? I even encourage you to learn about other art and art history in general, especially if you don't come from an art background like myself. I'm excited doing this video because I don't wanna just have this channel be a lot of BTS on my shoots, which is great. It's good to have a lot of that um, and I'll keep doing that. But I also wanna have more videos of me talking, you know, giving insights, sharing things with you guys, knowledge, experience, etc. And I would love to keep doing more of these videos. Um, so please subscribe, hit, hit a like, hit a comment, you know, all these things and support your boy and let me know for the next time what you want to make a video what you want me to talk about make a video about